definitely a lot easier in daylight. A lot of times we have to come out here at this time just because that's what the tide will allow. We have to time it up specifically to be able to access this. So these are uh, gooseneck barnacles. Uh, we've harvested these off of Barview Jetty in Tillamook Bay. These are a type of crustacean, closely related to shrimp and lobster. Really popular ingredient harvested in Spain and Portugal. We have one of the most abundant uh, populations of this species in Oregon, but they're not a huge commercial product. The Pacific Coast is typically the only place that these are found, Puget Sound down to Baja. Most of the things that we serve are not yet in the market or are part of the culture of things that we eat yet. So that's kind of what we're trying to show here. So basically the, the barnacles all grow down here in the rocks. When the tide is high, the surf hits them. Uh, we're gonna try to find some that appear when the waves come back down and we're gonna swoop in and harvest them. What do you think? You see anything? Yeah, we should just get down there. This is the tide that you want because it's coming in like crazy like that. I just wonder, do we have access to anything? Should, uh, should we call it off? I like this way of approaching it. We're about to get wiped out here right now. <laughs> so we just kind of wanted to show you in daylight where we're going to harvest the barnacles. The tide's a little bit too high right now, but we're going to come back a little bit later this evening when the tide's low. It's going to be dark outside though. We're going to change locations to Three Graces Rock Formation. It's also in Tillamook Bay. It's just right down the street. And there we gather several different varieties of seaweed as well as sea snails and limpets. About 30% of the menu we source ourselves and those are the, you know, kind of the more like spotlight ingredients. Like, hey, this is something that, you know, could either become a market or it's something that is a market somewhere else that we're just trying to say, hey, you can eat this here too in Oregon because it's plentiful. Because it's all about uh, rotating the fisheries instead of always, always, always hitting the exact same fisheries one after another. We're trying to present these things and show that it can be done in a fine dining aspect. So this is a limpet. It's a variety of sea snail. They attach themselves to the rocks here in the intertidal zone. If we hesitate, and you don't immediately scrape it, it attaches itself and it's really difficult to take off without damaging it. You don't see this on anybody's menu. These are really popular in other parts of the world, but I'm not aware of any other restaurant serving these right now, in the, in the States at least. We've also harvested three different kinds of seaweed here. And then last are the dog walks, which are braised and then served at the end of the meal as one of the savory courses. You have to hit these with a hammer to get the meat out. We can access certain clusters when the tide is high, but depending on the weather, sometimes that's a little bit dangerous. So we typically go at a lower tide. A lot of times that happens to be in the middle of the night. So we go in the dark, lanterns, headlights. We try to map out the area as much as we can and access things that are further out at really good low tides. We save clusters that we can come back to when it's not as good of a tide or even a, a higher tide. Kind of doesn't make any sense because they're like everywhere, but we're like kind of like hemming and hawing around because it's a pretty invasive process. If you're literally uprooting something off a of rock, so you just want to make sure it's the right thing before you take it off because you can't really reverse that. The way the regulation works is that you can only harvest them from a man-made structure, such as a pier or a jetty. And also, you're only allowed to take a one cluster every 10 feet. It's like maybe the size of a volleyball or something. We think that the size of them is really important, so they kind of have to be about as wide as they are tall. See how this one's like real long? Like it's not an ideal, it's not a perfect one, but these little chubby ones are exactly what you're looking for. It takes about 20 years for barnacles to grow to this size. So that's why we only take such a small amount in the cluster, because if there's a cluster established, a lot of the seedlings can attach to that cluster and regrow a lot more quickly. But if you were to take everything off the rock, it could take hundreds of years, if not um, ever, for them to come back to that spot. So it's really important that the guidelines are followed 
when they're harvested. There are different grades and qualities based on where they grow, how hard of surf they're in, and basically what side of the rock they grow on. So here in this cluster, we have a, what we would call a B-grade barnacle. So this is a cluster. And you can see by the color and just the density of them that they're just not gonna have as much meat inside. So this is something that we would sell for a cheaper price uh, if we were wholesaling them. Uh, these ones here are also a cluster size, but you can see by the color of them that they're a little bit denser. And usually that has to do with the fact that they're in a harder surf area, so they're feeding more often and they become stronger because they have to hold on tighter. And then here uh, we have two examples of grade A barnacles and they're just graded by size. And then these are the same and these are just uh, slightly larger. So this would be basically a primo gooseneck barnacle here. So the barnacles are prepared very specific way. It's simple, but also pretty easy to mess up. So we cook them in seawater that we use from just re-dissolving salt that we make from neat tarts based seawater into boiling water. And then the barnacles are blanched really quickly for about 45 seconds to one minute. Taken out, we put them in ice water until they're chilled through, drain them off, and then uh, we'll go through the process of cleaning them back on the uh, cutting board. And these are going to sit here in this water for about 45 seconds to a minute. I usually cut into one to make sure that the skin has separated from the meat uh, and the meat has cooked through. So we kind of just check one. I just cut the end of it off and you can see that the skin has separated from the meat. Then we just want to make sure that they're thoroughly chilled. It takes about five minutes for them to cool down all the way. But it's like blanching anything. You don't want to let anything sit in ice water for an excessive amount of time because then the flavor will start to dilute. So just until it's chilled through and then we remove it. So how the barnacle feeds, uh, as it sits on the rock, this mouth part will open and a long feeler will come out and they basically grab plankton as it filters the water. So this is what uh, absorbs the majority of the sand. A lot of people that use these for the first time have a bad experience with them being sandy. So basically we take this after it's opened up and we rinse this out really well, right into the mouth of it. And then we'll remove that piece. When we come back to the cutting board after that's done, we cut the end of this off and then come up the side here. The skin is uh, really hard, so we don't use that. We just peel it off. So then we have our barnacle here, and as you can see, there's the meat exposed. The head of the barnacle is not edible. It's basically a rock, and that's where the, a lot of the sand storage is that we just washed out. So we're just gonna clip that piece away. It's just really crucial that all these are cleaned properly because one piece of sand can ruin the entire dining experience. It is a pretty decent yield, uh, especially because these pieces weigh almost nothing. So it's about a 75% yield on meat uh, for these uh, ones that are grade A. So that's essentially what makes it more valuable. So then uh, we basically come through here and we're just gonna slice this into bite-sized pieces. And then we'll serve it um, with the juice from the barnacles. So a lot of the smaller ones that we talked about that don't have as much meat in them, we um, extract the juice from them by st steaming them like as you would like steamer clams. And it's used to marinate the nicer specimens. So it's really crunchy and then it becomes tender and it dissolves in your mouth. It's like amazing texture, really clean, clean ocean flavor, really mild, sweet, briny. Like if you were comparing this to something else, I would say it's a lot closer to cooked shrimp or crab meat or lobster meat as it would be to like shellfish, clams or oysters, which have a much more assertive flavor and texture. This is um, one of the easier things to eat that comes out of the ocean. We're just going to be plating them into this shell here. This is a shell from a cockle. I would just use it for presentation. And this is a juice from the barnacles that we talked about earlier from the young barnacles. I'll just get spooned over. It's been acidulated with a little bit of lemon juice. And then um, this oil that we finish it with is made from uh, fig leaves that have been preserved and then grilled. I'm always curious about new ingredients. You have your eyes open, you're always paying attention and trying new things that are just premium products that no one even knows exists there.